So welcome everybody to this latest video on 160 Matt and in this video we'll be going over equations of a straight line and find the equation of a line when given two coordinates. Now to find the equation of a straight line you need two bits of information, one of them being guaranteed needing the gradient between the two points and the second bit of information is either you need to know the y-intercept or a coordinate that the line passes through. And again, depending on whether you've been given the y-intercept or the coordinate passes through will determine which formula is best to use. Now, when you are asked to find the equation of a line that passes through two coordinates, you're not expected to sketch or plot the coordinates and find the equation from your diagram. Instead, what you want to do is use the following formulas after labeling the coordinates x1 or y1 and x2, y2. Now, to find the gradient, we use this formula here, which if you've watched a previous video, to work out the gradient, it's the difference in the y-ordinates divided by the difference in the x ordinates or what you typically do is draw a triangle work out the distance up work out the distance across and then divide the two numbers uh, distance up divided by distance across now just be careful if you are using that method and just make sure that the scales are going in the same increments so the scales are the same and that you're not just simply counting the squares without referencing what those squares mean so for example if the squares are going up in twos or fives or tens just be mindful of that because you actually need the distance not the number of squares and then what you then do is then use choose uh, either coordinate given as x1 y1 and then i would say we use this formula you can use y equals mx plus c but i would probably possibly say that the most easiest way and the most efficient way of writing the equation of a straight line when you're given two coordinates is to use these two formulas. So use y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and then use y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. Now the answer will be the same as y equals mx plus c, it's just a bit of rearranging you need to do, but I would say that you're less likely to make a mistake using these two rather than using y equals mx plus c. So let's go into looking at an example of using those two. So here it says we need to find the equation of a line that passes through and then we've got two sets of coordinates. So looking at question A, which I'll do in blue. So the first thing I want to do here is I want to work out the gradient. So I'm going to label these points as x1, y1 and x2, y2. Now it doesn't really matter which coordinates you label as long as you've got one as the first coordinate and one as the second coordinate that's fine. You don't want to mix up x1 with y1 or y1 and x2 and, and all of that. That's It's not worth it. So here I've got the gradient which I'm going to label as m. So y2 which is 8. Now how I usually do this is I write down the, and that's actually wrong, so here we've got y2 so this is going to be one coordinate so I've got 10 and 8 and then my second coordinate is 6 and two, and again, including any signs, so they're all positive, so that's not too bad. And then all I've then got to do is just stick a minus there. You tend to find that some students, when they mess this question up, is they'll get the coordinates the wrong way around, or they'll substitute it in wrong, and that's where the error comes from. So then working this out, I've got 10 take away four, which is six take away is equal to four, and I've got eight take away two, which is six, and then I can simplify this fraction if it's possible, which I can with this one, so it's two thirds. Then what I then need to do is pick one of these two coordinates. Now it doesn't matter which coordinate you go for, but I would always suggest that you go for the easier one. So I'm going to go for this first coordinate as my x1, y1. So then using 2, 6, and this is my x1, and this is my y1, I've got m equals 2 over 3. So I'm going to use the formula of y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. And all I'm going to do there is just substitute those numbers in. So I'm going to substitute that, that, and that. So substituting those numbers in, what do I get? Well, I get y minus y1, which is 6, equals m, which is 2 thirds. And then I've got x minus x1, which is 2. Then from this, all I've then got to do is expand the brackets. So again, here I've got y minus 6 equals 2 thirds x minus four thirds and then from this I could either leave my answer as that because I would be correct but typically speaking when you're writing the equation of a line you want to make y the subject so I get y equals two thirds of x minus and then four thirds take plus six so I've got minus four thirds plus six now if this is on a non-calculated paper what I would do is write the common denominator of six so that would be y equals 2 thirds of x minus 4 thirds 
plus and then writing six as a fraction over three well that's going to be 18 over three and then i can join these two things together so i get y equals two thirds x and then minus four plus 18 is plus 14 over three and there is my final answer now another alternative you could have done to avoid working with fractions is at this stage here what I could have done is multiplied everything by 3 to get rid of this fraction. So what I would end up with is 3y minus 18 equals 2x minus 2. So just take the 3 over to the other side. Then expand the brackets. So I get 2x minus 4. And then take the 18 over to the other side. So I end up with 3y equals 2x plus 14. And then take the 3 over. So y equals 2 thirds x plus 14 over 3 and you can see I get the exact same answer and that would be fine in some cases I could leave my answer as this I could even leave my answer as this but again typically speaking I would make at GCSE level I would make y the subject so moving on to b so here I've got some negative coordinates that I just need to work with so again what I need to do is first of all work out the gradient so m so if I label my coordinates x1 y1 x2 y2 I write down my second coordinate first so it's 5 and 3 and then I've got minus uh, sorry 9 and then I've got minus 5 and then I've got to take away those two values and so simplifying this I get 5 take away 9 which is minus 4 and 5 minus minus 5 is 8 so then I get an answer and simplifying that fraction of minus a half so then picking one of the coordinates, so although I've labelled this minus 5, 9 as my first coordinate, I'm actually going to go for this coordinate just because I'm dealing with positive numbers. So then using 3, 5 as x1, y1, and I've got my gradient and m equals minus a half. So then using y minus y1 equals m x minus x1, and again substituting this m y1 and x1 i then get at y minus 5 equals minus a half x minus 3. so then all i then need to do is expand the bracket so y minus 5 equals minus a half x plus 3 over 2 and the reason why it's plus because i've got minus and a minus and then take the 5 over so i end up with y equals minus a half x plus 3 over 2 plus 5 and then what you then want to do maybe then is to convert the 5 so it's a power over 2 so what divided by 2 gives you 5 that's going to be 10 so I get y equals a half x plus 3 over 2 plus 10 over 2 and then I can combine those two giving me y equals a half x plus 13 over 2 and there is my final answer now again if I once I've substituted it in, if I have got a fraction, if I then just multiply and take the 2 over to the other side, then what I end up with is 2y minus 10 equals minus 1x minus 3. And then I've got 2y minus 10 equals minus x minus... Uh, I've missed out the minus, so that should be a minus there. I'm wondering where that come from. Uh, minus x and then we've got plus 3 and then I take the 10 over to the other side so I get 2y equals minus x plus 13 and then divide everything by 2 so I get y equals minus a half x or x over 2 plus 13 over 2 and you can see that those two equations are exactly the same now if you ended up with a graph now you may want to use this tactic particularly when your scales are different so what I mean by the scales are different as you can see on the x-axis my numbers are going up in ones and going up along the y-axis the numbers are going up in twos now what you might want to find an easier way of doing it rather than using the triangle method is to pick two nice coordinates and when I mean by nice coordinates I mean coordinates that are whole numbers so this is a nice coordinate because that coordinate there is zero minus four and if I go for another coordinate so let's go for this coordinate here which is two six now by using those two coordinates I can then work out the gradient so here the gradient is going to be uh, six 
and I've got 2 and I've got minus 4 and I've got 0. So if I take away those two numbers I get 6 minus minus 4 which is 10 and 2 take away 0 is 2 so then the gradient then is 5. Then if I pick one of the coordinates so let's go for 2 6 so using y minus y1 equals m x minus x1 I've got y minus 6 equals m which is 5 x minus x1 which is 2 and then if I then expand the brackets so I end up with 5x minus 10 and then take the 6 over I get y equals 5x plus uh, minus 4 and there is the answer to this question which again it makes sense because my y intercept is minus 4 but again if you ended up with a more complicated one I could have used y equals mx plus c it might have actually been easier because once you've got the gradient I know that c equals minus 4 and jobs are done and I would have got this equation either way but if the equation was somewhere else if the line was somewhere else a little bit more complicated then that's one thing I could have done the good thing about this method uh, particularly find the gradient is that you don't need to worry or pay too much attention about what the graph looks like because if you're given a graph you know then the gradient is either positive or negative but when you're given two coordinates it might not be as obvious as to the gradient of what is whether it's going to be positive or negative so let's have a look at a more extensive question. So this question says, find the equation of a line that is perpendicular to the line that passes through A, which is at 2, 8, and B, which is 3, 5, and also passes through A. So for this particular question, what I need to do first is find the gradient of A and B. So again, using the formula, I've got M equals, and it's going to be 5, 3, and 8, 2 and again I'm going to take those two numbers away so I end up with minus 3 over 1 so that gives me an answer of minus 3 now because it says that the line is perpendicular the grade the line that I want is perpendicular to this gradient that means then that the gradient of the line is going to be minus 1 over minus 3 which then gives me a gradient of a third so that there is my m value so then it tells me that the coordinate passes through is uh, through A. So this is, so 2, 8 is my x1, y1. So then if I then use the formula of y minus y1 equals mx minus x1, I've then got y minus 8 equals a third x minus 2. And then again, I can either multiply the left-hand side by 3 to get rid of the fraction, uh, which probably be easier, actually. So let's do that. So we get 3y minus 24 equals 1x minus 2. Then expand the bracket. So I get 3y minus 24 equals x minus 2. And then try and make y the subject. Take the 24 over. So I end up with 3y equals x plus 22 and then divide everything by 3 so y equals x over 3 plus 22 over 3 which is the same as y equals a third x plus 22 over 3 and there is my final answer